pleased to meet you, all right? Thanks. You don't have to worry about the pooch. Kids break later. Nice to meet you. Thank you. I'm little stuff, he's lovely, but he's very excitable and you probably don't want him jumping all over you. Yeah, that's all right. It's all he would do, but he's probably... Thanks. Got a coffee? I'm great, thanks, mate. What kind of coffee does that? No, I've got a bigger version of a staff here. I've got a Dr. Bordeaux. So, so you're more than used to it, but it's probably not really fair. So <laughs> having that going, We're not playing with him. Are you sure you don't want to? I'm fine, coffee? thank you. Okay. Can I have one, Jay? Yes, I've got a bottle. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Um, let's get rid of all that. Good. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, I got hold of Giles um, after we'd spoken. And um, <coughs> explained to him the situation, and he said, "Oh yeah, yeah, shouldn't you?" Know, and unfortunately, I have a bit of a different view of journalists than maybe other people. And he, he said, "Oh yeah, yeah, shouldn't be, shouldn't be a problem, shouldn't be a problem. I've just got to run it by our legal chaps, and I'll get back to you in about half an hour." Right. I didn't get back to us at all, and I phoned him up yesterday just before I spoke to you, and he said, uh, "No, I'm sorry, I run it past them, and there's absolutely no way we'll give you anything." I said, well, I said, and I spoke to Ben, I said, by all means, please ring him, and, sure. you know, yeah. said, well, I spoke to Ben, and, you know, he's more than willing for you to give, and he's under the impression that you've handed the names on to you, Tree, yeah. and I know that you haven't. Yeah, well, that's not going to change. Oh. Hence, the phone call back. Well, you me. can't not have the, what they've had. I mean, that's, he doesn't mean, um, <clears throat> you know, what I was trying, to, what I'm trying to do is trying to protect myself as much as possible, um, because, you know, if I could have got you to get them from, from them, because yeah. they said that the deal was for them, basically, was that I'll do an interview with you and I'll tell you what I know. I know they're not going to pick the names. Yeah. Uh, but they pass it on to you, Trey. In fact, if then you want to come and speak to me, then you can do that. And that kind of so that's where I was. Um, uh, so, yeah, so I'm trying to protect myself as much as possible because uh, this is... Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, I, I, can, I can fully... Do but I can't not have the information that they've got not with you guys because that would seem ridiculous. So you know, I mean, the way the way that we the way that we um, the way that we we are working, the way that we will work. Um, whatever you give us today, we're, we're not going to. I said this to you on the phone. We're not going to. We're not going to blow you out. We're not going to compromise you. We're not going to be approaching people and saying, oh, "Ben's told us this. What have you got to say about that?" Yeah, that's sure. Not how, that's not how we do things. Sure. You know, if, if by the time we've We've gone away and we've developed it from our point of view. If you know, if it's if it's worthy of further action and that we, we could possibly do something with it, then we would um, you know we would just approach that person effectively blindly and say, look, you know, it's come to our attention that maybe I don't mind people know say, really. That's that's yeah. not. I mean, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't rather not. But I, I'm not bothered. You know, you, you go to anyone, I'm, I'm going to tell you about them a bit. And you can say, and fellows, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, they, they know what they did. They know who, who, who I am and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm sure they're probably panicking anyway because I've done, because, you know, that was the, you know, uh, probably from the articles and stuff. I mean, you know, they all know who they are uh, and stuff like that. So, no, I get it. Um, you know, if my problem is this, and, it, and it's only a, a small problem, really, I suppose. It's me standing up against someone rich and famous saying, uh, my word against yours if there's four other people, I'm the fifth guy, or I'm the third guy. You know, if you've got other people there, I'm quite happy then to go and say, yes, absolutely, I'll be, you know. But I don't think my testimony on its own, regardless of what it is, is going to take them down. Because I think if they were a normal person in society, absolutely, there's an even chance. But these people are loved by people. And even now, you know, we were talking earlier, weren't we? Uh, this is my wife, Julia, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I, I, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, you didn't. Yeah, no, no, no. We're good. We met on the way in. It's a bad form, isn't it? Sorry. Care of it. Don't worry. Yeah, it's really bad. Um, but I was saying, you know, about one of the people on my list, and I said, yeah, but I quite like them still. You know? And then I went, and she went, what are you talking about? And I'm like, all the millions that are spent on making everybody out there love XYZ person even works on the people that know better. It's that powerful. And, you know, the publicists, the agents, the lawyers. Yeah. I know that it's something that we, I mean, we're, where we're coming from, obviously we've got all the all the fallout from uh, from Savile, and and then there's this side of it as well. I mean, one, one thing, one thing, I, you know, it's, this isn't entirely a matter for you. My advice would be to um, to give it some serious thought. But around the allegations you've made against Ken Clark, if 
for my honest advice, and this is not me sat here as, as a copper trying to, you know, be, give us a statement at some point, I'll be a very vague, simple reason. You've made the allegation in public. Mm. If you've given us a statement, you've then got the protection of being a witness. So that if, just for argument's sake, and I know, I know your view on this, if he was to turn around and do a Lord McAlpine and say, I'm suing you. Well, he won't. Start, yeah. yeah, he won't. But for start, if he can't, whilst there's an ongoing police investigation going. Okay. All right? Um, if, for argument's sake, I'm not for one moment suggesting that this would, this would happen, but if, for argument's sake, you were to, say, get, um, I don't know, Bloody Daily Mail's Tories rank. The Daily Mail to have been quite persistent about, you know, have you have you contacted the police? Have you done? <coughs> You've got that kind of protection that you you witness. It's as simple as that. Mm. So if they start doing anything, it's potentially well. Long and short is they won't. As soon as they know you're a witness, they won't because it's witness tampering, and they don't do that. Yeah, sure. So sure. so it's just something to maybe give a thought. And I'm not on about a massive in depth. Statement. Well, it is what it is. I mean, what, 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 what yeah, it exactly. is is me sitting in an office <laughs> looking at the, the guy gropes me out of nowhere. I mean, the, the, the difference, you know, you know the, dif the difference is, is, is once it's once it's sort of formally recorded. And I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm a senior investigating officer for this. If you give me a bland statement saying I was working on, on the Cook report and Ken Clark came into the office saying blah blah blah, and he gropes me, well, I'm not going to go and nick him on the back of that. I'm just not. If you were to give me a very, very full and you were totally supportive of a prosecution and I could corroborate it by other means, say for argument's sake, put you both in the same building at the same time for records, then maybe we might get to the stage of me going and arresting him or whatever. But we wouldn't just do it off a, a weak statement. And by weak, I mean it's because we'd have written it rather than what you're saying. But what it does do is it just gives you a degree of protection. Just, I'm not for one moment suggesting anything else was going to, anything would happen, but it just gives you a degree of, of security if you want. And it's, we're a confidential from inquiry, what? it's not going from to be. being in the press? Well, it, it, it depends, I mean, the, the issue, the issue for me is, is if you look at how, uh, how Lord McAlpine started suing people and, and, and the vast majority of it, it doesn't really matter whether there's any truth in it or not. You, you, it's a setup. you know that, right? You know uh, You've read yeah. the Scallywag articles, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah? No, I don't mean. you read the Scallywag articles. Did he see Scallywag? No. Why not? Right? But what he did in his book, he said, this is how... You you read that bit, right? You read his book? Well, I no, no, no. I'm really cool to cover. Right, okay, I so you have to, right, so in his book, it, he, he's, he's telling you how to be a spin doctor, master, you know, here's the dark arts, right? You walk, basically, in front of a car, right? You create sympathy for yourself, right? And then no one can accuse you of doing anything, and, and you've got public sympathy, and you can make money out of it. That's basically what he said in his book, right? That's basically what the guy's done, right? Ken Clark isn't going to sue me. It's not the same thing as McAlpine. McAlpine's demonstrating to the world how powerful he is, right? Now, whether he's guilty or not guilty, he's neither here nor there really now because he's got 185 grand from the Beeb, right? He's got 125,000 from uh, ITV. It's a payday for him. Just about to raise Sally Burke as PB Bank as well, I think. It's going to go for her as well. But, I mean, it's just, uh, it is, it's something to think about because it just gives you a, a level of a blanket of security. Because what, what I wouldn't want to find is that, say, say for argument's sake, Ken Clark, for whatever reason, and, 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 and please don't, you know, I talk very, very loosely, loosely here, but don't, don't, don't for one moment, just because somebody's, you know somebody's guilty, don't for one moment think they won't come out and say they're innocent to you, you know? That's the something. It's not beyond the realm of possibility. It really, really isn't, because you know some some people have got more front than Brian. It's a video and, tape. And um, he's on video. Well, if, video we can, if we can find it, I know who's got it. Well, be honest with you. She'll deny it, but she's got it. I'm telling you, because I can prove that she's given me other stuff that she shouldn't have. Right. So she. Where would you keep it? Huh? Where would you keep it? Because would you get one? Uh, she lives in the Cotswolds, so it's in a house in the Cotswolds, the same as all the other stuff. She's given me, um, Sylvia Jones was talking about, she's given me uh, stuff on uh, Fritz Capatici, uh, IRA guy, yeah, worked for MI5, 
a part force research unit, yeah? She's given me stuff uh, with Freddie Scappatici being interviewed in the car by Clive Entwistle, who was the executive producer of the program, right? None of this should exist, right? Outside of the program, yeah. right? Um, uh, this is all stuff that the Cook Report basically did for a program that they ran and they did a follow-up then uh, some months later. Well, it didn't do with me, but she has this material, right? She's got a guy called John Dignam, who was an uh, MI5 guy, again, in the Force Research Unit, who got caught by Freddie Scappatici, right? Interrogated by Freddie Scappatici, and then he was found the next day uh, on one of the roads in the... Um, uh, uh, in Northern Ireland, I don't know whereabouts he was, uh, with a bullet through his head, right, after this confession. And they basically say on the tape, you, you, you're going to die, so tell us your thing. I've got that tape. All from Sylvia Jones, who shouldn't have had that at all. And when I said to her, I'm actually going to use a transcript from that, she tried to sue me, uh, because it was her tape. It's mine. I own it. In other words, it's currency so who's of the, some kind. Who's she in the grand sort of scheme of things? Oh, well, she was the producer of the Cook Report programme that I worked on. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, but the point is, anything that happened to anyone famous, or anyone well-known, she had that. She copied it, right. she, she's got it. So, I know that Jack Mulvern has come out and said, from the Times, something happened to the Cook Report archive, and everyone's kind of gone, oh well, <laughs> that's typical of that kind of thing. Because I've said, look, there's a videotape here, just yeah. get the videotape. Now they're saying, oh, we can't find it, it's gone, whatever it is, right? Um, I'm, I'm sure you guys will be able to find it, but Sylvia has it, yeah? Um, and she is being, this, this woman would eat me alive within a second, wouldn't she? She is, she's a, a, a crime correspondent, she takes no hassle, she reports to Whitehall anyway, yeah? And uh, she's quite powerful, right? And, and she has basically said uh, that, uh, yes, she saw the tape, it exists, right? Well, hold on a minute. Yeah, she said she saw the tape, she saw you and Ken Clark. She didn't see the grope, but she saw the two of you in the Clive Entwistle says, says there's no such there's tape. There's no such tape. So they, at least, they're, they're, they haven't got their story straight, or at least they, when there was, you know. Uh, but, but she'll have it, because that's what she has. She has currency on everyone. And that this, this in a very small way, is what it's all about. It's about using people and having currency on them, and... I think child abuse and paedophilia in the entertainment industry is the gold standard. I'm, I'm absolutely certain of that. And I was on the edge of it. That's what it mean. I wasn't uh, uh, in the centre of it. Had I been gay, I think it would have been a completely different story. You know. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm happy to tell you what I told Giles and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, uh, and then we'll take it from there. I mean, yeah. t to be fair, I haven't been impressed with the other guys that came. You know, last week. You know, they were like balls in china shops, right? And I know. That you know, um, it's a uh, uh, it's a serious thing. But what it, it made me feel that it was like you haven't got a clue about the entertainment business, yeah. And so when I looked into your unit, and I kind of went, ah, that's what you do. You look at you know these pervs on the internet and all that kind of stuff, and blah blah blah, and, and neighbours and, and, and parents and stuff like that. There was nothing there that said to me. And we dealt with the entertainment industry yeah, and, and we, the high-profile people. We, the, the thing is, is you know, uh, we, we react to what we're told. Yeah. You know, we go out and we do, don't we do proactive operations where we know where we know things are going on. Then we'll go, we'll go out and actively try to catch people at it and deal with it. Sure. But in the absence of being told about anything, and bear in mind, until several turned his toes up, and even and even oh. after that, you know, we now know in retrospect everybody's coming forward and everybody's going, oh my God, how could this have happened? It obviously has been. It's obviously rife, and it's also been going on for years, and people have been turning a blind eye to it. And and you know, people are involved. Yeah, I'm involved. We, we we have it. We have it. You know, constantly. With you know, there is isn't any offence to this, but there's an assumption that as soon as you get a warrant card, you become telepathic, and you you know you can you can you can sense what's going on. And, and the bottom line is, we're only as good as the information we're given, and nobody has come forward in a way that it would be reported, you know, there may well have been historically people that have tried to report this, and I, I certainly suspect around Savile in particular there has, and you will just get people, oh, it's Jimmy Savile, don't be stupid, we all know he's a bit eccentric, or, and they've just been dismissed, and, and uh, uh, I've said, you know, one of, the, one of the, the many people that we've spoken to, you go back to the 80s, and if you told one person you were being brave, if you're telling two, you're being courageous. You know, 
you know, and I would suggest the answer from both of them would still be this, it's quite dismissive. So why would you carry on making a noise about it when you've been dismissed by a couple of people already? And uh, you know, and it's like uh, the, the, I, I, the make, I make jest of it, but society's changed considerably. And, and what what was you know, I remember sitting next to my to my mum when Freddie Mercury died, and my mum said, "Do you think you were gay?" Well, of course now you never even question that. But at the time, you know, I vividly remember at the time, and society's moved on. So when a kid comes forward now and says, this has happened, or such and such a body's done this, then I'd like to think, I'm not saying it, it, it doesn't happen, people aren't got rid of us as easily, but I'd like to think there's more chance that somebody would listen to what they're saying rather than dismiss it out of hand. And I think what's happened certainly from what you said and what other people have said to us is it was rife. And it's almost become a, an industry standard. Oh man, um, it, it, it's uh, you wouldn't believe. Yeah. It, look, I mean, the thing is, uh, you know, I was trying to say to you, wasn't I earlier? You know, trying to find a way of describing it, where it, it's something that looks, it's, it's almost like a lagoon. It looks beautiful to jump into, but you don't see the sign for the crocodiles, right? Yeah. right? And it's deadly, yeah. And um, uh, and, and what you're looking at, from Charlotte's point of view, what I went through is rent boys. That's what you are, yeah? Now, I wasn't gay, um, and I was known as the big flirt. So it's like being the big flirt. And everyone had stupid girls' names for each other, right? It'd be Leslie and Tracy, and this, and that'd be James or John or whatever, yeah. right? Um, so, you know, this is, this is how it would go, really. So if you look at sort of, um, you know, uh, major movie stars now, you would look at John Depp. John Depp was a red boy, yeah? You look at Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise was a red boy. That's how they got into it. And you look at me and you're going, but that's a fact, yeah? That's how it happened. I was put up in front of Tom Cruise, right? And he chose the other guy. And he had sex with the other kid in the bedroom and I was in his suite in the Dorchester, in this country, yeah? That's how we were used. And we were sent by Sylvie Young, our theatre school, right? That's what we were sent. Go meet Tom Cruise. Yeah. It'd be a great afternoon for you, right? And she did it all the time, yeah, right? She's, yeah, yeah. So... Um, no, I'm not saying about Sylvia, right? But when you start looking at this from that perspective anyway, you start looking at your own know, Was I sent or was it a nice thing to do? Because they had sex with the other guy there. I didn't do anything. I stayed in the room. But he told me what went on quite vividly. You can argue um, it two ways, can't you? You can yeah. argue that she's complicit or you could argue that she was doing your favour. You know, you just... But know. what was the favour, though? That was the thing. When we come away, you go, yeah, I've met a movie star. But I met a lot of movie stars at the time. Mm -hmm. And we went to the premiere. Right, so that was kind of the payoff for you. It's right. like you may have had this in the afternoon, but in the evening you're going along with what 200 other people, maybe something yeah. like that, to a premiere of Days of Thunder, which was for us the party. So, what JP went through, you know, he was gay, I didn't have to go through it because yeah. you know, he was chosen, not me anyway. So, that was that, you know, um, and that happened a lot. And that's anecdotal. I mean, that's just, yeah, just, it's just how it is. Yeah. how it was. And, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, the people. I'll be, you know, I'll be, I'll be sort of brutally honest with you, and, I, and I'll say that that's that's very interesting what you've told us. We couldn't take that any further forward unless we had a complaint from from him. Yeah. And so, you know, I mean, but so. But I'm trying to give you the. Yeah, no, the, the no, the please, no, please do. But what I'm trying to try, trying to reassure <coughs> you that we're not going to we're not going to charge off like balls in a china shop and causing aggro and grief and, and all the rest of it because, you know, I, I've been doing this far too long and there's there's very little we could do with that unless we had a detailed evidential statement of what went on in that room between those two. Yeah. And there's only him's ever going to be able to give us that. And, and whether or not he chooses to speak to us or not is entirely a matter for him. So you know that's, that's so the, I'll just that's try the a, problem. a little bit of a little bit of reassurance yeah. that, that we're not you know we're not going to start just chasing people. They're not going to go making Tom Cruise look at him, you know. But that then leads on to the next point, which is you know these people have been getting away with for years, and and, yeah. and it kind of but you laugh when you say Tom Cruise because he's a movie star. Movie stars wouldn't be like that. No, I, I kind of I'd heard anecdotal stuff around him before, but that's. That's because we just we just hate everybody, so we gossip about everybody. But yeah, I'd heard I'd heard things about it every morning. Okay. But he's so. suing a magazine fifty million dollars for um, the even, suggestion the suggestion that he's not right. a good father. Yeah. Fifty million dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy, you know. So there you go. That's a sign for someone, isn't it? 
is you want to come and sue me? I'm a movie star, taking chances, right? Um, another Hollywood movie star, you know. Um, Sorry, do you mind if I scroll? Because otherwise I'm going to. Yeah, do you want to record it? Um, Would that be better, easier? Uh, I could do. Um, no, I can't do because my phone. My well, phone well, get into my list anyway, and I'll give you that, and then I will talk each one yeah, through. Yeah, please, please if, if that's yeah. going to be do you easier. Start with the list. Yeah. Um, this hops off you get it all confused. Might be easier to yeah, yeah. Trust me, it's so look, very easy to these, confuse. These are the names that I I gave to Giles. Right. And more. Yeah. Um. So I'll talk you through each one and you can ask me questions and, and what have you and do your thing and, and what have you. Um, okay, we'll start the... I'll be... Right, okay. So, should we start at the top and just... Yeah, please do. Is, is, so, Christopher Kazanov. He was um, a big dynasty star yeah, at the, yeah. of, of, of his day, yeah? Um, so he was very famous for us, you know, he was the Hollywood guy coming to town. Yeah. We were in Birmingham. We were doing, I was a child, uh, 14, right, yeah. 13, 14, somewhere there. You've got to understand, I did lots of shows and I was very busy. So for a regular kid who goes to school, has his friends and stuff like that, I did three or four jobs a week. There'll be 50, 60 people at each job, maybe 20 or 10, but still you're meeting a lot of people, you're doing a lot of work. So when I was doing a theatre show, in one year I did seven theatre shows just to... Right give you some perspective, you go from one show to the next, to the next, to the next, and you're always auditioning, and you're always doing something. So when I met Christopher Kasanoff, um, he was at the Alex, I think, doing the show, or had just finished doing the show, and we were moving into the Alex, and in the right. rehearsal rooms, you, yeah. you, you bump into people and stuff like that, and you all drink at the same pub, right? I, I say drink at the same pub, I mean, you know, I was 14, yeah. but still, that's what you were doing, yeah. right? Because you're mixing with adults, right? Yeah. And, um, and, and really, ever since I was at the RSC when I started, uh, <laughs> you always got taken to the pub after what was, you know, and nothing happened, you know, at the RSC. They were extremely good at what they did. Um, their chaperones were second to none. They took you from yeah. the stage to the dressing room and they never left you alone. They bugged you. I mean, it was awful. <laughs> uh, but they did their job yeah, really they well. They were supposed to do, yeah. Yeah, but obviously you ended up at the pub a couple of times um, as kids do, right? And you're getting past the booze and what have you and all that kind of stuff, right? So, um, uh, so when I met Chris Fesnoff, the shows were exchanging. I think I was, I might have been in 15 Streets, uh, which was a Catherine Cookson show, um, uh, which should be quite easy to get those dates and, and stuff like that, possibly. Uh, or I was doing um, a Damn Yankees at the Birmingham Rep and we were using their rehearsal space. I'm not sure. So I did show. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, met Christopher Kasanov in the bar. We chat, we chat. We all got on. It was there was a little group of us from Birmingham um, who would always do the shows. Would always uh, hang out together. You know, if one of you was in a show, you'd invite the others to the bar to meet the cast and stuff like that. And you know, it's it that kind of relationship. So um, uh, we got very drunk uh, on what on most of the occasions we we met. We got blasted, really. Uh, one night we were all staying at the Holiday Inn in Birmingham even though I lived in Birmingham like my family was from Birmingham they wanted you all in the same place sometimes so um, uh, I was staying in the Holiday Inn um, which was next to Alpha Tower or somewhere there uh, near Broad Street I've stayed in it believe it or not but there you yeah, go so, yeah. No, I, yeah. Is, yeah. so I think it was that one so, um, uh, and so we were basically staggering back uh, to, the thing, uh, to the hotel room I came into my hotel room he uh, followed me straight in behind me and basically shut the door and uh, started to be very flirty. He looked, it was touchy feely anyway, mm. you know? Yeah. It was active touchy feely, right? Um, uh, but he came in behind me, shut the door and basically uh, uh, tried to kiss me in a, in a, in a kind of cag handed kind of I'm drunk way, so I don't really mean it uh, kind of way. But he did. I mean, he was massive. He was like six foot something as well. I mean, he was really, you know. I'm not big now, you know, I must have been, what, 4 foot 11 or something, I mean, I don't mean, it's, yeah. you know, um, so, uh, so yeah, so he was absolutely terrifying, and that went on for maybe um, uh, half an hour, you know, of being in that bedroom, I was on the bed at one point, he was on top of me, and uh, we rolled off the bed onto the floor, and, um, you know, and he would laugh, and, and sort of like say, oh, no, no, I'm joking, I'm joking, joking, because he thought I'd hurt myself, 
you know, and then it'd be like, no, 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 and then it'd be on again. Um, uh, but he kept me in that room for about half an hour, I think, until my friend Scott came in. And at, when the, he came into the room, he punched me in the face. Yeah? So he, I'm on the floor, basically. Yeah? And he's basically on top of me. He, so I'm between his legs. Yeah? yeah? And um, he's licking my neck and ear and all that kind of business. And, you know, basically razor rash all over my face. That's all I can, I'm feeling. And um, uh, the door opens. My friend Scott comes in. Where's the party? He gets up and he's pretending we're play fighting. He kind of punches me in the face. Right? And then he goes, ah, where's the party? Out with Scott, back to someone else's room. And I'm like, I've just been attacked by Christopher Kasanoff. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And Scott just went, you know, let's just carry on. Let's yeah. just, you know, it, it's okay. Nothing actually, you know, yeah. uh, that bad happened. And it's like, no, but he kept me in that room for half an hour. I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't do anything. You know, and he was crying. He was laughing at some points. He was really drunk. Um, but that's what he was like. And you could see that. That's what that guy was like. Um, uh, so that was that's 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 basically what happened to, to him. Then afterwards, um, it must have been what two days later. I may have, may have bumped into him again in the bar and uh, blanked. Nothing. I was not in the uh, I was not in the uh, the crowd anymore. Not in the in crowd. Yeah. No, I was I was very much out of it. You know, not even eye contact or anything like that. Which is you know pretty much how it went for me. <laughs> Really? Mm. What's he doing now? He's dead. He's, he's, he's I think he died, he died yeah. yeah. A few years ago, maybe. The next one's definitely not that. Max Clifford. I was, a, I was an unofficial client of Max Clifford, by which point, by what I mean is, is that I didn't, when you're a child actor, you don't have to pay Max money. Max invites you out. Right. Right? His company puts on events. So, um, uh, I mean, I don't know how much you know about him or, or whatever, other than what you see on TV, but his company is, is, is the PR company that you go to to hire. And uh, you hire him and he'll improve your image. He'll give yeah. you a profile, right? Depends on how much. But, I mean, it was, you know, when I was with him, it was 90 grand for three months' work. Now it's, you know, actually, I don't think he has a... a t- yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's incredibly yeah. expensive. Um, uh, but he would give you a profile. He would, he would, he would make you, he would make you famous, really. Antonio de Sanchez went to him, right, and she said, "Make me famous." And he got uh, sucking Norman Lamont's toe, you know, put it in the paper, you know. It was David Mellor. Was it Mellor? Mello. It was David Mello. Mello or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember so, that. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, it made me feel quite nauseous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was that incident. So that was trying to make her famous, right. and it backfired because no one really likes someone who does that. Uh, and then I think at the time it was a lot of kind of kiss and tells going on and stuff like that. So Max Clifford invites you out to base. You get the phone call of the day and it will be from someone in the office. Sometimes it was from Max, but most of the times it was from one of the girls in the office yeah. who said, how would you like to go to X amount of premiere or uh, Stringfellows or wherever? But because you're in the business and you're working, yeah. they want you in their, their club. Because, you know, I was on, say, for example, Second Thoughts. I did a couple of episodes of Second Thoughts with um, uh, Julius Sawala and James Bonham and uh, Linda Bellingham. And then we'd all go off to string fellows afterwards. And that'd be all of us, you know, before we went home. So yeah. you'd work all day, and then it'd be off to string fellows, and you'd party all night. And everybody was there, or everybody of the day was there. Right. So you'd get the East End a lot who was there. And I'd done East End, so I knew most of those. Great Chill a lot was there. You know, don't forget, a lot of kids on Great Chill were like 25. You know, they weren't actually children, yeah. you know. So they'd be there anyway. But then a lot of kids were. So I was, what, 13, 14, and I was invited to Stringfellows. The BBC put me in the car, sent me to Stringfellows. You know, Mac, uh, Peter Stringfellow um, and Max Clifford were getting people, you know, his job is to get people to go to his events, yeah. right? So putting me in the room with people and stuff like that is, is what Max Clifford does. And he sits you down, it's a bit like Scientology, they sit you down in front of the video camera and say, tell me the truth about who you are and what have you, because I need to protect you. Right. Right? And that's why I was saying to you earlier,